Hello everyone. I read a story some time ago. One Sunday morning, a little boy attended mass with his parents. Later, just before going to bed that evening, he knelt at his bedside and prayed. Dear God, we had a good time at church today, but I wish you had been there. Dear God, we had a good time at church today, but I wish you had been there. Friends, lack of enthusiasm on the part of participants of worship or lack of reverence for the house of God or an irreligious act perhaps was understood in the boy's mind as an absence of God. He probably observed the people singing or praying or reading the scriptures and yet were not worshipping the Lord with all their heart, soul, mind and strength. Friends, worship is the highest form of prayer that brings us closer to God. When we go to church, we anticipate that God will be present and active in our times of worship and that He will hear and answer our prayers. We expect Him to bless and comfort us with His words. We want Him to guide us and remove worry from our lives and put us at peace. But we must remember, when we worship, God must be satisfied. Friends, about 1,500 years before Christ, in the Sinai Desert, God spoke to Moses and gave a set of guidelines by which the Israelites could live their lives in a way pleasing to God. These instructions cover both the religious and secular aspects of life, how to worship God and how to live in harmony with the family, friends and the rest of society. Then God instructed Moses to erect a tent, later to be called the Tent of Meeting or Moses' Tabernacle so that he could dwell amongst his people in the wilderness. The Ark of the Covenant, which contained the tablets with the Ten Commandments, was the place of God's presence, and it was kept in the most holy compartment of the tabernacle tent. The children of Israel carried it with them throughout their forty years of wilderness wanderings. After the conquest of Canaan, they kept it in the tabernacle at Shiloh. As the story goes, David was anointed as king of Israel and thereafter he took it to Jerusalem to be housed in a tent. Later he wanted to build a permanent temple where God's people could worship but was forbidden from doing so because his hands were stained with blood. Friends, God wanted not a man of war but a man of peace to construct the temple. And also God made it clear to David that a house built with human hands could not contain the creator of the universe. But he does want to live and rule in our midst. He wants to meet us and lead us in his ways. He wants his name to be known to his people that we may call on his name in the times of need. Friends, after David's death, his son Solomon built a magnificent temple to God on the hill of Zion in Jerusalem. After the completion of the temple, Solomon set it apart as sacred to the Lord and said a prayer of dedication which is considered one of the longest prayers in the whole of Scripture. First, he prayed that God may hear his solemn prayer. And then he prayed that God might always see and hear the prayers of anyone who would pray in the temple. He also prayed that God may hear the cries of the foreigners in their midst so that the name of God will be recognized in the whole world. Added to all these prayers, he repeatedly pleaded that God may forgive the people not just for sins already committed, but for things that they would do in the future, for the times they would wrong others and be defeated by an enemy, or would suffer famine or plague because of their sin. Friends, since the time of Solomon, Temples have been dedicated in many lands across the world. Similar prayers of dedication have been offered by believers. However, and sadly, the temples built and dedicated as the earthly dwelling place of God among His people have also been looted, destroyed, defiled and desecrated by the arrogant pride, evil conduct and ungodly ways of human beings. Friends, the Apostle John records one such event in his Gospel, which we read today. 
As was his custom, Jesus once visited the temple in Jerusalem at Passover. Entering the temple, he saw many changes along with merchants who were selling animals for sacrifice and was upset that people had turned the house of God as a place of business and sin. Clearly, this was not what the temple was built for. Jesus regarded both merchants and customers guilty of des desecrating the temple and drove them all out of the temple. Some people call this the cleansing of the temple. Friends, what is the message for us? As we were constructing our new church, some people suggested selecting an auspicious day for the opening and blessing. Since I do not believe in such beliefs and practices, I said to them, when we put God first, all other things fall into their proper place. I did feel bad that I turned down the suggestion of truly good and devout people. But God always has a master plan in mind. He can turn anything around. He is full of surprises. Yes, our Lord has indeed arranged everything for this special day. Guess what? First of all, just as the prophet Nehemiah and the Israelites overcame all obstacles and faced the discouragement of his own followers during the rebuilding of the temple and walls of Jerusalem, almost 500 years before Christ, we also have overcome real obstacles and challenges along the way through prayer and determination, particularly the difficulties associated with obtaining the necessary approvals and adequate financial resources. Friends, God has either taken us around the obstacles or removed them. This beautiful little chapel has been made possible through the generosity of many friends like you here in Hong Kong and from around the world. This chapel is a gift dedicated to God, to thousands of others who will come to worship and to yourselves personally. Today, I sincerely thank them and you for the gift. Secondly, God has chosen for us today to hold the blessing ceremony. Today is a very auspicious day. In Chinese tradition, any date with a double number, such as the third day of the third month, is considered highly auspicious. Besides, the odd number three is believed to be lucky as well, because it sounds similar to the Chinese word for birth. But when I chose the date for the blessing two weeks ago, I did not pay attention to this. It was divine guidance because the Mariners Club was closed on Tuesday 27th February and March 3 was randomly chosen as the day to hold our weekend service. Friends, we trusted in the Lord with our, all our whole heart and so He has let things happen for us. Thirdly, it is most appropriate on this day of dedication of our church that the gospel for the third Sunday of Lent, year B, which is today, contains a story that details Jesus' cleansing of the temple in Jerusalem. Friends, although this church is only temporary, it is nevertheless important that each of us will do our part to make it truly a house of God by showing respect and consideration to fellow worshippers and reverence to scriptures, religious images, pictures and services. Because you and I will come to this church for about five years to meditate, pray and rest, to worship our Lord while lifting our minds and hearts to Him, hearing His word and receiving His grace, forgiveness and love. In this church, we will also meet people from different nations, cultures, socio-economic status and religious traditions. Therefore, the challenge for us to make certain that we will walk in the ways of our Lord and make everyone feel welcomed in our church. For God not only lives in heaven and in churches, but also inside His church, in people's hearts, especially the hearts of those who worship, believe and obey Him. Friends, today we gather as God's people to dedicate and consecrate this church to Him. Henceforth, Whatever the occasion that will bring you here, I pray, just as Solomon prayed, that you may be met by the Lord, the healer for body, mind and soul, that he may hear your cry for mercy and forgive your sins, 
that this quiet, calm and holy place may drive all your cares away, that these simple walls, sacred pictures, images, songs, music and murmured prayers may bring you healing, comfort and strength, and that your time with Him and His people in this dwelling place may make you joyful, peaceful and holy today and all the days of your life. Amen. God bless you.